Welcome, my name is James Mills. I'm the importer of the Iron Gazelle engine for the UK. As I'm sure you're aware, the MSA have chosen the Iron Gazelle engine to power its British Cadet Championship from 2013 onwards. This DVD is to take you through all the scrutineering tools available and their applications. Here we have the standard 16 piece toolkit available for all scrutineers. It comprises of tools to check parts such like the core dimensions of the transfer, inlet and exhaust duct, in track lengths and shapes etc. It also comes with a paper form that shows the application of the tools for the scrutineers. Let's go through the tools briefly. The first tools we have here are the templates for checking the carburetor. This one, the, the first one is for the shape of the intake on the carburetor side. The second one is for the sizing of the rear of the carburetor and the third one is for the venturi size of the carburetor. Moving on, these two here are used for the exhaust restrictor. The first one is for the shape inside the exhaust restrictor, whilst the second one is for the diameter of the restrictor itself. As we move to this tool, it is a multifunction tool. Its main, its main purpose is for checking the core dimensions within the liner. The tool we have here is the shape template for the piston crown and the length of the skirt of the piston. This tool is to be used for the shape in the combustion chamber in the cylinder head. The tool we have here again is a, is a multi-purpose tool and it is used for checking the height and the, uh, of the inlet and the exhaust. The tool here is an insertion tool for the uh, clutch drum. The tool we have at the back here is used for the angle of the intake. The cylindrical one we have here is for checking the crankcase cylinder height from the centre line of the main bearings. Moving on to the tool at the back here, the shape template is designed to go onto the bottom of the cylinder itself to check the shape and angles of the transfer ducts. The aluminium block tool is used for the, the length of the intract length to the piston. The tool here is for using uh, the head volume whilst the cylinder head is off of the engine. And finally in the packet here we have all the uh, pin gauges for checking the drillings in the side of the carburetor. Now we will look at how all these tools are used for checking of the engine. Let's now look at the tools for checking of the exhaust tub restrictor. Firstly remove the exhaust tub from the engine. The first tool we're going to use is a no-go gauge for checking the maximum diameter of the restriction in the exhaust tub. This should not fall through the hole in the exhaust stub. The second tool we're going to use is a, is a shape template which is for the inside of the exhaust restrictor. This is placed from the gasket side of the exhaust and should match all the way around on every plane. This tool can also be used for checking the height of the restrictor and the tool shouldn't pass beyond this upper plane. Firstly, we need to remove the nut to allow us access to the clutch drum. Once the nut has been taken off, the drum can be removed from the engine. The template we're using here is the maximum diameter of the clutch, drum, the clutch drum can be, and therefore should not fall inside the drum itself. Now let's look at the inlet and exhaust timings. After you've removed the carburetor and the thermal spacer from the front of the engine, it is now time to look at the installation of the port time and equipment. With our port time and equipment mounted, this may vary on different people's equipment. To allow free access and rotation of the crank, it is always advisable to remove the pull start mechanism. This is done with the three screws on the side of the cover. With the cover removed, we are now going to use the CIK feeler gauge for port timing. Firstly, we're going to look at the inlet. What we need to do is place the feeler gauge into the port and hold down to the bottom edge. Then, rotate the crank in a clockwise direction. Zero the digital degree wheel and then rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. This then gives you the maximum opening angle 
of the inlet. We're now going to look at the head volume on the engine. To do this we, we use the CIK insert tool for the spark plug thread. Start by inserting this into the top of the engine. Ensure that the insert is firmly in place. Then we need to check that the engine is on a, a flat plane. Ensure that the engine is not tilted in any direction. We will then check to get the engine towards top dead centre. The simple way of doing this is just with a Allen key or screwdriver or something similar and just ensure that the engine is at, at top dead. We then use a digital barrette and the fluid inside is, is TQF. Lower in place just to hover above the top of the insert. In the usual fashion bring the fluid to the top of the CIK insert. The minimum volume for this is 6.1 cc's. Before we move the cylinder head and cylinder, we are now going to just check the intrac length on the inlet. Ensure all gaskets are removed from the engine. Then rotate the crank to make sure that the piston is covering the inlet. Take the aluminium block and place on the carburetor studs, ensuring the plunger goes firmly home to the aluminium and does not touch the piston. We are now going to look at the inside shape of the combustion chamber on the cylinder head. Remove the head from the engine and using the profile tool, the shape of the combustion chamber and squish band should match exactly to this tool. You can also check the cylinder head volume using the plate supplied in the kit. The minimum volume for our for the cylinder head is 7.4 cc's using this. The procedure for checking the volume is the same as we've used whilst checking on the engine. Place the cylinder head on the studs on the plate and use the, the four screws to tighten down. Ensuring that the cylinder head is on a flat surface, place the insert tool as before. Use the digital ret in the normal procedure but to just to emphasise that the volume Using this procedure is a minimum of 7.4 cc's. We're now going to look at the port times of the transfers. I've already attached the digital degree wheel onto the engine as before. Firstly, ensure that the cylinder is fastened down to the correct torqueness. This is 12 newton meters. Using the feeler gauge that we use to measure the inlet and the exhaust, place it in the port, trapping it between the top edge of the piston and the port itself. Zero the degree wheel and then rotate in a clockwise rotation until the feeler gauge becomes trapped between the top edge and the port again. This then gives you the measurement for this engine, but please refer to the MSA fiche for the upper and lower limits of this port. Of course, remember to check the opposite side using the same procedure. With the cylinder removed, we are now going to check the position of the inlet and the exhaust port in the liner. To do this, we insert the, this tool up against the top edge of the liner. And you need to ensure that the top leg doesn't enter into the exhaust port, whilst the bottom leg doesn't enter into the inlet. We can now come to check in the width of the ports in the liner. To do this, we can use the no-go gauge. The tool here will check the exhaust core width, the exhaust bridge, the transfer width and the inlet width. This is done by placing the tool within the cylinder and ensuring that it doesn't fall into the ports. We are now going to look at the shape of the bottom of the cylinder on the gaffic plane. To do this, turn over the cylinder using the aluminium template supplied in the kit, place it over and check that the transfer ducts match the shape on the plate. The shape on the, the size on the plate is the maximum and therefore the ducts on the engine should not exceed this. We are now going to inspect the piston. After you've removed it from the engine, remove the piston ring, like so. Then using the shape tool, place on the front edge of the piston ensuring that the shape of the crown and the length of the skirt 
matches exactly. Repeat this process on the back side of the, the piston. Again, ensuring that the shape on the crown matches the tool and also the height matches the tool exactly. For this next section, you will have instructed the driver's representative to strip the bottom end in preparation for you to check the crankcase height dimension from the centre line of the main bearings. To do this, we use the tool out of the kit. With the crankcases been placed back together, insert the ground bar into the main bearings and all the way through. Then, with the height gauge, Zero it, zero it on the top plane of the crankcase. Then move it all the way down to the top edge of the ground bar. Like so. When you take this measurement, remember to add 9.95 millimeters onto it as the dimension in the fish is the centre line of the bearing, which is the half of the bar that is through the bearings. We're now going to focus in on the carburetor, checking it using both the no-go gauges, the shape template and the pin gauges. With the carburetor stripped, as shown here, we will first check the Venturi. Using this gauge, which is a no-go gauge, place inside and ensure that it doesn't pass through the Venturi, like so. Then, with the second tool, which is a profile tool, check the shape and diameter of the front mouth of the carburetor. Place the tool in the carburetor and ensure that the shape matches. Then rotate the carburetor and with the final tool, Check that again this is a no gauge, no go gauge tool, ensure that it does not go into the back of the carburetor, like so. When it comes to the pin gauges, there are several holes to be checked. The ones we are going to demonstrate here are the idle and the high speed jet. Using the correct diameter as stated on the pamphlet for the tools, insert into the carburetor, like so. Both the high and the jet are both using the same diameter. On this carburetor, as you will see, there are several holes underneath the Welsh plug. For this demonstration, we are not going to remove it, but if further inspection is required, this must be removed and the other tools, the other pin gauges, used. I hope this short DVD has been beneficial. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to contact me.